Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech of Minds video. So I recently come across this cool little web application called Intercept and this can work directly with an RTL SDR. Now in a nutshell, Intercept combines some of the most popular data decoding tools we can use with an RTL SDR. And instead of having to use command line tools to run these decoders, we can run them all within a web browser. Intercept supports decoding of pages, 433 megahertz ISM sensors like weather stations, smart meters, and even tire pressure sensors. Intercept can also support decoding ADSB packets. That's the packets of telemetry data that aircraft send to ground stations for location tracking. There's also a satellite tracking application which can predict satellite passes overhead, great for capturing weather data from those weather satellites or tracking when the next ham radio repeater satellite passes over for communication with others. Intercept also incorporates Wi-Fi recon, meaning you can monitor local Wi-Fi broadcasts in your area. Now there is a whole host of features within this as it uses Airmon and Aerodump as the backend applications. Drone detection is also possible according to the list of features. And lastly, we have Bluetooth scanning which can provide tracker detections, phones, and pretty much any Bluetooth device it discovers. The installation is fairly simple, and we'll go over this in a moment, but fundamentally, you will need a Linux machine, but that can include a Raspberry Pi. In fact, for this demonstration, I'll be using a Pi 5. There are some external tools you'll need to download for all of the intercept features to work, and most of these are single line commands to install those tools. Now what you're seeing now is the latest GitHub instructions for installing Intercept, but this may change as Intercept is actually continuously being developed. So with my Pi Fi running, I can view the desktop, open a terminal window and start going through the external tools installation. First, I'll install the RTL SDR library. Next, we'll install Multimon. Then we'll install RTL 4.3.3 and then aircrack ng. Now when it comes to dump 1090, you can try using the single installation command, but when you go through the installation, do not allow dump 1090 to run as a service or automatically. If you do, then you'll need to disable that service before using intercept. If you find you are having issues with the dump 1090 installation command, then you'll need to install this by compiling from source, which is actually not as bad as it sounds. Dump 1090 will be required for receiving aircraft, so it is one of those must-have external tools. Once you have Dump 1090 installed, you can go ahead and install BlueZ Bluetooth. And then lastly, you need to git clone the Intercept project and run the pip install requirements command to finish installing any third-party applications that are required by Intercept. And once everything is installed, you can reboot your Pi and then make sure RTL SDR is plugged into your Pi or whichever computer that you're using. And of course, a suitable antenna is attached. Now for optimum performance, I would recommend a dedicated VHF stroke UHF antenna actually mounted outside. If you now run the sudo python3 intercept.py command, the intercept web server should now start. Now from this moment, you can either open Intercept within a browser on your Pi, or if it's connected to a network with other computers, you can use any other computer that's on the same network. So this is what Intercept looks like. You can choose which mode to use here. Now only one will work at a time as it uses an RTL device for each of those features. You can choose the RTL SDR device here, and if your device is not listed, then you may need to check its connections. Basically, make sure it's plugged into the USB port properly. The first example is pages, and here in the UK, pages are still used by certain emergency services and medical staff. So just be careful with any information you receive here, as it will not be intended for you. And remember, this is for educational and experimental purposes only. There are device settings down the left here, like gain, squelch, PPM correction. But when you're ready, you can press the start decoding button here. As pages signals are received and decoded, their messages will be shown in plain text. You do have the option to log these messages or export them for viewing on other applications. You can export via JSON or CSV. 
The orange recon button down the bottom can be pressed, which will show a little bit more detail about the packet of data that's been received and decoded. To move on to the next demo, you need to press this stop decoding button so that the RTL SDR is freed up and ready to use on the next application. Now let's look at what's available on the 433 MHz band or ISM band. So here in the UK, 433.92 is a popular frequency, but if you want to change the frequency of this, you can change it by using one of the predefined buttons. Once you've chosen the frequency for your region, press the start listening button. And after a short while, you'll start to see packets of data being decoded. Most commonly, you'll see weather stations sending their live data. Now with a large antenna outside, you'll find this will populate quite quickly. You'll be surprised by the amount of devices out there that are constantly transmitting on the ISM bands. Even tire pressure sensors from cars or remote RF switches used for things like garage doors can be detected here. Now the next mode along is aircraft and this will tune your RTL SDR to 1090 megahertz. So the better antenna you have, the more aircraft locations you'll see populate on the map. There are some options down the left side which can toggle extra information like flight trails, call signs and altitude information. If you want to see a larger map, then you can click on the full screen dashboard button, which makes seeing these aircraft a whole lot easier. Clicking on one of the aircraft that's moving around will show you further information about that specific aircraft. Now, all of the information shown here is coming from the aircraft ADSB packets directly and not at all over internet. There is now an option to perform some simple filtering. For example, you can select all, military or civil. Now at the time of making this video, there was no military planes in the air within my reception reach. Statistics for each selected aircraft is shown on the bottom right. Now this includes heading, altitude, latitude and longitude, speed and even the score code. Now the satellite tracking feature will require you to enter an observer's location in lat long format. The pass predictor needs this information so it can calculate or predict selected satellite locations relative to your own. There's a button at the bottom which will update the TLE data. Now this data can change periodically, but it's always best to make sure this is updated. Now before requesting any pass predictions, you can choose which satellites to show. Now these range from weather satellites to ham radio satellites, or even Starlink, Iridium or GPS satellites. So once you calculate a pass, those pass details will be shown in the middle of the screen and on the top right you'll see a little map showing the exact path the satellite will take at its next pass. Now this is quite useful for those of you that would like to use directional antennas to point at the satellite directly as it passes by. Now the Wi-Fi scanner looks like this and this will use a separate Wi-Fi dongle that's plugged into your computer. Just enable the monitor and then select the Start Scanning button. Any detected Wi-Fi routers or devices will be shown here in a list. You can drill down to look at more specific information like signal strength, which band is in use, which channel is in use and so forth. Now, I believe this is where drone detection would also work, but there were no drones around at the time of making this video, so I cannot demonstrate that. Now the Bluetooth scanner is very similar to the Wi-Fi scanner, but of course your device needs to have a Bluetooth device built in or buy a dongle attached. For Wi-Fi, I did use a USB Wi-Fi dongle, but for Bluetooth, this just used the Bluetooth module that was built into the Pi 5. You can select the device before starting the scan if you have more than one attached. Now I'm not gonna go into detail about what all this information means and what you can do with it, this video is about showing you the application and what it can achieve. Now, I have been in contact with a developer over the past week or so, and they are very active at adding features and fixing issues. If you'd like to see some new features, then why not leave a comment down below and hopefully the developer will respond. If you try installing this yourself but have issues or find bugs, the best place for support would actually be on the developer's GitHub page. Now for this to work, you just need an RTL SDR, a Raspberry Pi, and of course, a suitable antenna. An antenna designed for VHF, UHF, and ADSB would be most suited and outside in free open space. 
that's where you're going to get the best performance. Anyway, guys, that's a brief overview of Intercept. And if you want, go ahead and try it out yourself. I think it's a fun little project to have a play around with and could potentially be quite useful if you have a go box and you need all of these tools in one place. It definitely saves on having to run each one individually from a command line. You literally just click a button and all the data is shown on the screen via a browser. Anyway, guys, until the next video, take care of yourselves and we'll see you in the next video.